All right, segments from secants is another quick little single theorem lesson. Uh, it deals with secant lines, which are lines that uh, don't run just tangent to a circle, but actually cross into a circle. And if we have two secant lines, and they meet at a vertex outside of the circle, there's a specific relationship between the segments of those lines, where they lie within the circle, like segments B and D here, and where they lie without of the circle, like segments A and C right here. And the theorem says that if we are to take if we were to take the value of A, or in other words the length of this little segment, and multiply it by A plus B, or in other words the length of that whole line from the far side of the circle back out to the vertex, then it would be the same as the length of C multiplied by C plus D, or this whole line down here. So if we were to uh, have a couple of number of numerical values for these, we can actually substitute in the values that we have and solve for a missing piece. In other words, if we said that uh, maybe A, this segment here, was 4 units long and B was 5 units long, then if we know that, say, C is 3 units long, we could solve for D. So we'd just take A, which is 4, and multiply it by 4 plus 5, and we could set that equal to 3 times 3 plus D, C, and then C plus D, yeah? So 4 plus 5 is 9, times 4 is 36, and that would be equal to 3 times 3 plus 3 times D, and then, of course, 3 times 3 is 9, so we could subtract 9 from both sides, and we'd get 27 is equal to 3d, divide both sides by 3, and we get 9 is the same thing as d. So if this piece here is 4 units long, and this one is 5, then if this one is 3, this one would be 9. And you can see the calculation is really pretty easy. So we're going to have a number of example questions that deal with this theorem. Let's take a look at them.